Welcome to the second iGEM Academy video. Uh, here I'm going to be talking to you about plasmids. Uh, so there are these little rings of DNA. And of course when I say little, I mean little compared to the, the chromosome of a bacteria. So if I were to draw a little bacteria here with a flagellum, and I were to draw the DNA, the, the DNA code that the bacteria actually contains, uh, one of the biggest ones obviously is going to be the bacteria's chromosome itself. So this is the, the genome of the bacteria. What uh, instructs the bacteria to be the bacteria. Um, but then, of course, outside of that, it has sometimes these little plasmids, these rings of DNA, which replicate themselves, actually. Uh, so I've denoted three different sections. This is our imaginary plasmid here. Um, this section here is the origin of replication, denoted as ori, or uh, ori C if it's in the chromosome. And, and this, so this spot of the, of the plasmid actually allows it to reproduce itself in the bacterium. So it uses some of the bacterium's machinery and it uses some of its own. Uh, but essentially, replication of this double-stranded DNA here starts somewhere within this sequence. Um, of course, there are other parts to this plasmid. This, this part here, of course, I've arbitrarily covered, colored these. Uh, this part here is an antibiotic biotic resistance gene resistance gene. And of course any bacteria that have this are going to survive in whatever antibiotic resistance this codes for. So for example if I were to go to the lab and make up a, a petri plate with some nutrient agar, but that agar was supplemented with uh, say ampicillin, then only bacteria that have a plasmid with the antibiotic resistance gene will grow. So we can have some confidence that whatever grows here has this plasmid. Um, and then the third part here would be something like your gene of interest, whatever, you know, the reason that you have this engineered plasmid inside of your E. coli cell. So in this case, um, I'm going to use the example of a green fluorescent protein. Green fluorescent protein. So this part, of course, is just a typical gene. It has, you know, your promoter sequence, and it has your ribosome binding site, and then it has whatever your actual coding sequence is, and that coding sequence is what will end up turning into the protein, which makes your bacteria green. Um, so I'm actually gonna slide down and show you a real plasmid. This is something that I work with myself, and you can see here it's got a lot of the same features. In fact, they're all the same. This blue portion here, is an origin of replication, specifically uh, an origin called PMB1. There are many origins of replication. So aside from PMB1, there's um, Col E1, Col E1, and there's uh, P15, just to name a few common ones. And of course, what differs between these is the copy number of the plasmid. So in a bacterial cell, the plasmid might re reproduce itself a different number of times depending on which origin of replication it has. There are also incompatibility groups. So you can imagine if you have a plasmid that has your uh, PMB1 type origin of replication, but you have another plasmid that also has that PMB1 origin of replication. Uh, and of course, these are two different plasmids. You've kind of designed these to be different. Let's say this one expresses GFP and this one expresses RFP. Um, so you can imagine that if you put these two into the same bacterial cell, so here's our E. coli. Of course, this is not drawn to scale. Um, because they share the same origin of replication, just by the nature of, uh, I guess, probability, one of the plasmids ends up just kind of being outcompeted by the other. And the cell will always kind of just take one of the two. So these two are said to be incompatible. Uh, for example, PMB1 and Coli1 are known to be incompatible because their origin of replication machinery is too similar. P15, on the other hand, has a different kind of replication machinery, um, which allows it to coexist peacefully with PMB1 and Coli1 origins of replication. Just a little note there. Um, okay, chloramphenicol resistance. Ah, I thought it was ampicillin. Uh, regardless, so there are many different... Uh, antibiotic resistance genes that you can give. And this is useful because you can imagine that you might want to select for bacteria that have two plasmids. And, you know, if, if you only had one antibiotic resistance to choose from, then you wouldn't be able to select both plasmids or only the cells that have both plasmids. 
Uh, and here you can see the GFP gene that, uh, that I've outlined before. And of course, all these are actually to scale. This is a, a, um, a plasmid as has been annotated in the, uh, the program called APE, A -P -E, which you can download for free. Um, and of course, this guy is flanked by our iGEM restriction sites. And we'll get to those in a later video, but those are very important for, for iGEM work. Um, anyway, so that's, I think, a good place to stop, uh, a good little summary of what a plasmid is and uh, how we use it in the cell.